Hello and welcome to the 16th installment of my Pokemon Generation 3 ROM hacking series. The focus of this tutorial is to learn how to manipulate the map's tiles and environment using only a script. This video will be broken down into the following segments. How can I dynamically change a tile on a map? How do I properly use the Type 01 level script? How do I manipulate the weather? And how can I add randomness to my scripts? Following these segments will be an application demonstration. In this final part, we will be creating a script that changes the map's weather only 20% of the time it is loaded. Shown on screen is Route 101. There are two ledges that the player is blocked by when traversing the route from bottom to top. The upper ledge is the one that makes us walk through some tall grass to get to Old Dale Town. We're going to get rid of this ledge using a script instead of editing it in advanced map. This idea allows for dynamic mapping and can be used in hacks to progress the storyline further or open new territories for the player, among many other things. I'll be assigning this script to the custom NPC currently selected on screen. So far, we interact with the NPC who then says disappear. After that, we're going to be using the command set map tile. This command will set a specified tile on the map to whatever we want. The first parameter is the X position of the tile to change. The second parameter is the Y position. The third parameter is the hex value of the tile that we want to display. You can find this value in Advanced Maps Block Editor under the Blocks section. Since we want to bulldoze the ledge and make it grass, this value should be set to 0x001. If you don't understand how to use or read the Block Editor, I suggest you go back and watch a previous tutorial called The Nature of Tiles. The final parameter is the movement permission of the tile. Actually, it might not be the movement permission, but we might as well think about it that way. I say this because I've only ever seen this value exist as 0x0 or 0x1. If 0x0 is used, the tile becomes passable. If 0x1 is used, the tile becomes impassable. If I get a hold of any new information, I'll let you know, but it's not even close to something anybody should worry about. Looking back at the map, the ledge consists of more than just a single tile. In fact, it consists of 10 tiles. This means that we're going to have to use the set map tile command 10 times in order to completely erase this ledge, each command using different position parameters. I filled out the commands. This block of code should replace every single ledge tile with a passable grass tile. Before we end things off, we need to use the command special 0x91. If you're hacking fire red, this value should be 0x8e instead of 0x91. After we use the set map tiles, this special value will refresh the map to properly display our changes. We can now round off the script. Viewing the result, we first speak to the NPC, then all of the northern ledge tiles disappear and the grass is left behind. We can even walk through the grass since its movement permission has been changed. But what if we want to exit the map then come back? The ledge has returned and we can no longer pass through. This means that the set map tile command isn't permanent. In order to keep the ledge tiles hidden, we'll need to change them every single time we load the Route 101 map. If you recall back to the level script video, I briefly mentioned the Type 01 level script which had a label of set map tile, but I skipped over it since we hadn't gotten to the command yet. This level script type is used for set map tile commands. Before we make the level script, however, we need to think about how the whole disappearing thing is going to work. We can't just make a script that only has a bunch of set map tile commands in it and runs when we first enter the map. Then the ledge would disappear before we even get a chance to interact with the NPC. We'll need to use a flag in the NPC's script to tell the game that we've already spoken to the NPC at least one time. I'll be using the flag 0x200 for this. Shown on screen is the type 01 level script. All of the set map tile commands that were used in the NPC's script are present here as well. At the beginning of the script, we check if flag 0x200 has been set. That is, we check if the NPC has already been spoken to at least once. If so, the set map tile commands are called every time the player loads Route 101, simulating a story progression. I've inserted everything into the game. Now if we speak to the NPC, exit the map, then revisit the map, the ledge tiles are gone and do not return due to our Type 01 level script. Let's move on to weather effects. In Advanced Maps header tab under Map Options, there is a multi-choice box to set the map's default weather. This is a nice feature, but what if we want to change the weather through the script? This kind of thing could be useful for dramatic events or map ambiance. To do this, use the Set Weather command. 
This command takes one parameter, and that's the hex value of the weather type we switched to. These weather values can be found in the multi-choice box in Advanced Map. The first option can be referenced as 0x0, the second as 0x1, etc. Since our map starts with regular weather, we're going to change it to rainy weather, which has a hex value of 0x3. Next, type do weather. This will actually change the weather just like how door change actually changes a door state. Set weather only prepares the game to change the weather. Checking it out in game verifies that our script works. Another command I want to quickly mention is reset weather. This will change the new weather pattern back to its original state. In our case, it would set the weather back to regular instead of rainy. Reset weather also requires the do weather command. That's everything I plan to discuss in this tutorial. Using the information we've learned, we'll create a level script that changes the default regular weather to rainy weather 20% of the time it is loaded. A great way to use weather, in my opinion, is to make it randomly change throughout the region, simulating more of a realistic weather system. To do this, we need to use the random command, which you'll see used in the script being written on screen. This command takes one parameter, which is the hex value of how many outcomes may occur. For example, if we use the command random0x3, there are three possible outcomes that may occur, those being 0x0, 0x1, and 0x2. The outcome that occurs is stored in the variable last result, so we can use the compare command to check what last result has stored and then go from there. In this case, I'll be using the command random0x5, since I want the weather to change approximately one in every five map loads. This means that last result may store a value of 0x0, 0x1, 0x2, 0x3, or 0x4. I'll be checking if last result stores the value 0x0. If it does, the weather will be changed to rainy instead of regular. If a value other than 0x0 is stored, the weather will not be manipulated. The random command is something I like to use to add unique and interesting features to my hack, such as shaking a berry tree and only getting a berry every 1 in 20 shakes or something like that. I like to make the success rate dependent upon what kind of berry it is. We're about at the end of creating this script. Everything that went into making this has been taught to you through this tutorial. Hopefully you all learned something valuable from this, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask either over at Poke Community or right here in my video's comments section. Thank you so much for being my audience, and I'll be back in the 17th installment of this series.